welcome to episode four in the Preparing for September series. In this episode, we're going to look at choosing and setting up your first and main file. So let's decide, first of all, what sort of file that we actually want. The first choice we've got is the large ring binder. You'll have used these at university. The only drawbacks to these are the actual size of the things. If you put two or three of these in your bag, then you're gonna find that your bag is pretty much full before you start. And if you get these loaded, then they're gonna be pretty heavy. The other disadvantages with the ring files are that to put pages in, you've actually gotta use the transparent covers, or you've gotta start punching holes in. And as you know, once you start punching holes in, those pages can rip and be eventually be falling out. But of course, an advantage is they're easy to add or take things out and you can use an index system down the back. The other choice, <clears throat> this is my personal choice, are these hardbound A4 lined books. Advantages for these are, of course, the actual size of them. And I used to have this and an assessment book in my bag at all times. Once you write in them, the pages are bound in, so they're never going to fall out. But the disadvantage is that to put out extra pages in, you're literally sliding them between these pages here. So they're effectively loose. And if you want to have a reference system, you've got to use the small post-its to actually stand out from the side of the book. So those are the two choices, really, that you've got to have. It all depends on you. It's a personal choice. It really doesn't matter. But let's move on and see what we need to be putting in these books first of all. If you look on my board here, you'll find the two sorts of information that we need to get in there. One is a class information and the other is school information. Now, if you remember back to one of the previous videos, I said before the school closes in July, you need to get in to get some information. You can meet the staff, introduce yourself, have a look at your classroom quickly, but you need to get this information. And if you haven't been into school and you haven't got this information, then without this, you're going to be at a disadvantage in planning and organizing all through the summer. So let's have a look at what we've got on the board here. And these go this information goes right at the beginning of your file. So for the information about the class, which you should have got from the previous teacher, you need a class list. <clears throat> if you couldn't get a, a current one for the year that's actually coming up, then the, the previous year will be fine. That's not a problem. Any test results that the previous teacher can pass across to you, so you can actually see the achievement of each child. The groups that the previous teacher used. So which children was he or she putting together for different subjects and how did they change perhaps across the curriculum areas? This is an important one here. Seating positives or negatives. There are some seating arrangements in a class that will work, some seating arrangements in a class that won't work. For instance, if you put two or three children together who like to chatter, they will chatter. If you put two or three children together who really don't get on, then you'll find that out pretty quickly. And the previous teacher will be able to give you a guideline for your initial seating to try and avoid some of these problems. As I say, it's only an initial guideline because you can adjust your class as you, go, as you progress through the year. So it's a good starting point, a good one to get. And for information, do you have any children that are SEN? And any children who have medical requirements? Maybe inhalers, maybe an EpiPen, anything that perhaps you need to know or be aware of as the class teacher. So there you are one page or two pages of class information, things that you will need. 
Now, if we move across, there's basic school information. And as this is probably a new school for you, this is something you'll need to know. What is the planning system like? What approach do they have for planning? And perhaps what is the overall academic year topic list? So it will tell you that they actually plan half termly and these are the topics, or they plan termly and these are the topics. A staff list and what are the staff responsibilities? So you know all the teachers who are actually coming into the school or actually at the school at the moment and the responsibilities that they're going to have. So if you've got a problem in a particular subject area, let's say perhaps in geography or something like that, you'll know exactly which member of staff to go and see to give you some assistance. What schemes of work are used? What schemes of work are used perhaps for maths or perhaps for grammar or phonics or anything like that? The ones that are currently in use in the school. And what is the behaviour management uh, approach in the school? Do they have an ongoing system? Is it a progressive system of behaviour management with different stages? Or how does it operate, if at all? And the last one here, does the school provide a document for new staff? Many schools do. I know I used to do. So a new member of staff coming in gets all the information in one pack. And that generally doesn't apply to some of this, but it's general information for a new member of staff. So we've got another list of school information. So in your first file, your main file, we're setting this up right at the beginning. So we've got our class information and we've got our school information. And both of these go at the front of that file and both of these you'll need to have in the summer to prepare for September. So let's look at the next stage and actually get down to the nitty gritty of setting up this file. The first thing to do is to write on the cover of the folder your name and class because inevitably you're going to leave it somewhere and it needs to find its way back home. So here we are, I've written my name and class on the front. Let's have a look inside. We know from what we've just been talking about that the first things we're going to put into here are our school information and our class information. The next thing that has to go in the front, which you'll be looking at all the time, is your timetable. And really, that could be stuck here on the inside, sideways on here, your class timetable for that term. The next thing we need to consider is how we're actually going to set up this folder. And there are two ways to do it. We can either use the dividers and then divide the whole file up into subject areas. So perhaps maths, English, geography, history, etc. Or another way, and one I would recommend, which is to divide this file up term by term. Now you may wish to actually subdivide within that term, but that's entirely up to you. But my preference will be to have your planning for the autumn term altogether, your planning for the spring term altogether, and your planning for the summer term altogether as well. So just how are we going to use this actual folder? Well, let's take out all our dividers. And let's say we're going to use number one here as our autumn term. We'll put that back in. So number one would be our autumn term. And the first thing that we would actually put in here is going to be our long term planning for the autumn term and our medium term planning for the autumn term. So we've got them right at the beginning of the term our two documents and further 
um, videos will show you how we're going to do that. So you don't need to worry about it at the moment, but there'll be the first two things. And everything else that follows in the autumn term will be a springboard from these actual long-term and medium-term plans. Now, what I suggest then goes in is your day-to-day -day planning. So your day-to-day -day planning will then follow for that term. So whatever you're going to do on your, from your timetable on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday, your planning day-to-day -day will actually be here. And that means if you've got your planning here in your folder, it's perfectly possible, shall we say, on a Wednesday or a Thursday, or whatever day you're teaching, to have your folder open on your desk and your plans for maths or your plans for the afternoon art lesson. So when you're actually teaching, your planning here is open, you can refer to it. And what you would do at the end of the day is to plan for the next day and that planning would then be available for you as you're teaching. Now, the only caveat I've got to give you on that is that some schools may have a different approach to planning. Whereas in my schools, I would ask to see the long-term and the medium-term plans, and then your personal planning, I wouldn't ask to see as a head teacher or a senior leadership team. Some schools may want a weekly overview of your planning. Some schools may ask you to plan in a particular way um, for your lessons. Now, in these days of workload and thinking about this, anything beyond long-term, medium-term, and then doing your own personal planning, anything beyond that is adding to your workload. And schools should really be looking hard at this. But as I don't know the arrangements in the school that you're going to, I can't really advise it. But my, arrange, my thoughts on this would be long term, medium term, and then plan day by day and have your personal planning in this folder. And then we're doing maths. My folder is open on my desk and I can read through it. So gradually, your planning for the autumn term or the spring term or the summer term will result in a wedge of lesson plans that are done day by day. Now, if you actually wanted to divide it differently, and shall we say for the autumn term, spring or summer, you wanted to have your maths planning all together, which allows you then to track your planning through, that would be fine. But it actually means you have to put subdivisions within this term. I personally would plan it day by day, but if you did it subject by subject, and then of course referred back to your timetable, that really isn't a disadvantage. So there we are, two different ways of setting out your main planning folder, but this is the key folder that you need to have with you all the time. So whichever one you choose, the hard bound, um, hard backed and bound one, or this ring folder, uh, it's really up to you. So there you are, a quick guide to setting up your main file. But don't worry about the planning, we're going to look at that in future videos. For now, we're just starting to get organised.